I'm Joe Reiser. I'm here in Frankfurt mixing front of house for Gogo -Go Penguin. For Gogo -Go Penguin, the main priority for audio is to achieve kind of level and clarity. And the difficulty we have is two kind of acoustic instruments that can be quite difficult to amplify. So grand piano and double bass. And so with the scale of the different shows we're doing, it's really about trying to achieve the same clarity and SPL across different venue sizes of everything from like a small club like today to kind of, you know, larger venues and big concert halls. So we're running HD96 at front of house. Um, and a DL251 at stage, but they're connected over Cat5 Hyper Mac to an AS80 for redundancy. And then AS80 is then connected to a DN9680 to convert to Super Mac AS50. And the, that's then connected to the DL251. On stage, we've got two DL251s on a passive split between front of house and monitors and uh, Pro One mixing monitors. Few bits of choice outboard. Been moving more and more stuff into the console. Previously, we've been touring with a Live Professor um, external effects rack to do time-based effects, but now with the kind of extra rack space on the HD, we've been moving more and more of that stuff into the console. And actually, I think there's only two spot effects for two tunes that's still in Live Professor. Everything else has kind of been built into the show file. One of the best things about HD for me has been being able to integrate all the external effects into the console. So having things like the TC VSS3 and VSS4, and also the 2290 in there, as well as the kind of array of effects from the Pro Series, um, and the amount of rack slots available in this meant that I can kind of really hone down on kind of specific you know, song effects, spot effects, and also just the kind of general verbs and effects that we'd use for a show. So I first got approached by the Minders development team when we did a small kind of pop-up show in Manchester because it was kind of seeing the very first kind of iteration of the new software platform really. Um, and there was, you know, at that time, there was a lot that was good, but there was a lot that was kind of unfinished or didn't, you know, didn't quite work well. There was a lot of back and forth between myself and them as the, um, as the software development process went on. Some things that I kind of didn't quite agree with are now in the console and I use day to day. And there's definitely things that kind of, um, we, kind of we had a, a, lot of, um, a lot of chats about that kind of ended up in the console as well. So I think the main difference between this and the Pro Series is the workflow and the flexibility that it offers. So uh, initially when we started touring and started using the HD, I was kind of using it very much in the kind of Pro, ser pro Series mode. But as the tour's gone on, I've started kind of, you know, using the flexibility of the surface and the way you can kind of create parts of the screen or on different fader banks and kind of make the console work for me and the way I want I like to work. So with this the, being the first tour that we've gone out with HD, a large part of uh, production rehearsals were really kind of recreating a lot of stuff we had in the Pro Series, but, um, but also kind of going quite deep into tour pre-production, virtual sound check, and having the time to dial in a mix kind of before we get to the first venue, which on this tour was quite an important thing because the first show was our biggest show. Um, so yeah, having the, having a, the time with the console in pre-production made, made life a lot easier. It's not a massive channel count this show. It's only 32 inputs at stage, but we have quite a lot of uh, inputs of effects returns for specific tunes. Um, on the console, with the bus to bus processing, it's been really handy to kind of um, be able to sum and process stuff together. And with having 96 buses, it kind of gives you the flexibility to kind of do what you want as well. The main challenges we have with, specifically with things like Grand Piano, is kind of achieving a good tonality, but at the same time achieving the SPL we need and game for feedback. So we have a kind of variety of mics and pickups we use on the piano some of which are kind of not so good sounding, but we can get a good level out of them. And depending on the venue we're at, really changes the balance we're using between pickups and microphones. So in smaller places, we might have to rely kind of more heavily on the pickups because I can get more gain, but the kind of the tonality and what they, what they reproduce isn't quite as nice as the microphone. So it's really about trying to find a good balance between the two venue, venue to venue throughout the tour. I really like the fact that it's an actual touchscreen. 
and the, the tactile nature of using the screen is really different to other software platforms and other, other consoles. Um, it feels much more kind of intuitive to kind of touch a screen and to use it like, like you know, that you, know, you can grab an EQ, you can grab something on the screen and use it rather than having to grab for a knob. But there's still you know, all the kind of actual physical controls there if you want. Uh, one of the big things for me has been having the um, Ocean EQ in the console. Uh, it feels less necessary to carry an external system processor uh, to feed the uh, feed the system day to day, and having the flexibility of um, you know 12 bands of stereo EQ or 24 bands of mono EQ over over left right sub fill or however, however you want to drive the system has made life a lot easier. So I've been a, a Midas user for years, uh, toured the Pro Series for a very long time uh, before moving to HD, and the reason I the Pro Series was because I thought they were fantastic sounding consoles and the workflow was, was great for me. Um, and they've really managed to kind of keep that into the HD as well. But I think what they've managed to expand on is kind of not having to feel like I need, not needing to use lots of external effects, having everything integrated into the surface and they've expanded on the kind of workflow possibilities as well. And that's kind of what makes Midas the choice for me. So I started my route into live sound on the music side of things, uh, studying a music degree, and then started working in studios, and then started working in small clubs in Manchester, and then slowly picked up more and more touring work as time went on. I think for anyone starting in the industry wanting to work in live sound, I'd highly recommend kind of working for a PA company for a couple of years. I think that gives you a really good grounding in stagecraft, signal flow, gets you, you know, allows you to know a lot of different pieces of equipment, um, but also, I think for me, having kind of a good grounding in music as well has been really helpful. You know, kind of understanding and being able to communicate with musicians on a musical level, not just a technical level. Um, but then, other than that, really, yeah, know your signal flow, make sure your stage craft is up to spec, and yeah, you'll, you'll be you'll be on your way. The best thing about being a front house engineer specifically is having a show that goes to your kind of understanding of how the mix should be really, you know, goes really, really well. And when you have a really fine-tuned mix, hit all the, you know, hit all the effects cues and everything, you know, everything goes as, as, as well as you'd hope it to. And in a lot of cases, your standard for yourself is probably higher than that of the audience. But it's, you know, yeah, for those, you know, few shows at all where you feel it's perfect, that's kind of what, what makes it all worthwhile.